Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tony Fergie. I want to take the time out to thank all my subscribers. The old ones, the new ones, the ones that just keeps coming back because you love what you hear and what you're seeing. Boy, do I have a story to share with y'all. So apparently this young lady went to Uganda, opened a medical clinic. Yes, I said medical. A medical clinic without the necessary credentials and then ended the lives of over 119 Ugandan children. Wait a minute. This story can't be right. Someone must got paid for something. How is it that you allow a person, a stranger, to come into your country because they have money, because she collected donations, who have money to come into your country Open a clinic. Open a medical clinic to provide medical care to your children. Like seriously, you guys, you have to watch this. And please comment below what you guys think. Bedford woman is facing disturbing allegations about her nonprofit in Uganda. Renee Bach is being sued for allegedly operating a medical facility without a license, leading to the death of hundreds of children. 10 News reporter Jessica Jewell is digging into this, and she is live in the newsroom. Jessica. We got our hands on this copy of the lawsuit. The Women's Pro Bono Initiative and two mothers filed this civil suit in a court in Uganda saying actions by the group, the nonprofit serving his children, led to the deaths of their children. The allegations stirring up a firestorm of criticism and tonight the woman taking the heat is firing back. Our focus is malnutrition, so we um, do preventative care programs and then also treatment services. Less than two years ago, we sat down with Renee Bach to talk about her nonprofit, Serving His Children. Its mission, Fighting Malnutrition in Uganda, clearly outlined on its website. When mothers come to Serving His Children, many of them have lost hope. But now some are blaming the organization not just for losing hope, but losing lives. Two mothers and the Women's Pro Bono Initiative suing Bach and serving his children. Court documents say they were led to believe Bach was a medical doctor, claiming she unlawfully practiced medicine and offered medical services to unsuspecting vulnerable children. David Gibbs dismissing the claims as false. He says his client learned skills to help provide assistance as necessary, but always under supervision of a qualified medical professional. A U.S. citizen with no medical training set up a medical clinic in Uganda and is now being accused of killing 119 African children. From 2010 through 2015, Renee Bach says she took in 940 severely malnourished children and 105 of them died. She says she had lay medical training. Uh, a CPR certificate, and her high school diploma via homeschooling. In 2011, she hired three Ugandan nurses to help out during the day and stocked a room she dubbed the clinic with medical gear, such as oxygen tanks, IV catheters, and monitoring equipment. But according to one of those nurses, it seemed Bach was handling a lot of the medical care herself. And uh, Bach again herself says she serviced more than 900 people, and we're talking about incredibly sick people. It was what shocked most of us. This is what Prima Kwagala, a Ugandan civil rights attorney said. She said, we couldn't imagine a human being without skill taking into her care people that were almost on their deathbeds. Now, Kwagala is actually now suing Bach on behalf of two mothers, two mothers who lost their children at this clinic. Her court filings include excerpts from Bach's blog, as well as a blog posted by a supporter of the charity who visited and took pictures, including one of Bach inserting an IV catheter into the vein of a severely malnourished child. The mothers allege they were led to believe that Miss Renee Bach was a medical doctor and that her home was a medical facility as she was often seen wearing a white coat, a stethoscope and often administered medications to children in her care. The actions of Renee and SHC led to the death of hundreds of children. Renee, that is a serious allegation. How do you respond? Um, so 
First off, I have never represented myself as a medical professional or health worker of any type. Um, the organization serving his children hires uh, medical professionals that are Ugandan, um, local and national folks. And um, I have assisted our medical team in emergency settings and in crisis situations, um, but I have never practiced medicine and I have never adorned uh, or put on any sort of a uniform or white coat for that matter. In these now-deleted images, she's seen wearing a stethoscope, administering care to children. The plaintiffs say they only learned after their children died, Bach had no proper medical training. Here is a little bit of what Bach herself wrote in one of her blogs about a nine-month-old baby, a sick nine-month-old baby that was rushed to her clinic. She says, I hooked the baby up to oxygen and got to work, took her temperature, started an IV, checked her blood sugar, tested for malaria, and looked at her HB count. Of course, that's the measure of hemoglobin in the blood. I was attempting to diagnose the many problems that could potentially be at hand. Got it? Malaria, positive, HB 3.2, a big problem, most likely fatal. She needed a blood transfusion and fast. She also later wrote that we performed a blood transfusion, but didn't clarify who we was. People of Uganda, Renee Bach, a United States citizen, opened up the health center in Uganda. She was then accused of causing the deaths of 119 African children between 2010 and 2015. Renee claims she took 940 severely malnourished children and 105 of them passed away. She had no medical training or license for her facility and she was treating children who were almost on their deathbed. What she did was reckless, unethical, and self-centered. And now she is getting a documentary series instead of getting arrested. Wild accusations that were made about me is that I killed 800 children. I was medically experimenting on children compared to Adolf Hitler. Feeling called by God, what is that like? Baby John! I just started to see malnutrition everywhere. So many children came seeking help. Things as if she was a medical personnel. She was not qualified to do this. They were not licensed as a medical center. DIY, is that what you call it? This was over my head as a nurse. So we went to the U.S. Embassy. Charges that he brought against Renee. So many wild accusations. We need to talk about the white savior complex. I do believe we saved lives, hundreds and hundreds of them. Renee is being put up as an angel. People back in America think she's awesome. They're giving her money. Angels like Renee bring death on the continent. So the important question is, well, what was the death rate? Was it within norms or was it outside of norms? And in this case, it was way outside of norms. Mm -hmm. In 2011, the death rate was 20% of the kids that they took care of died. Experts said if you had any kind of charity with those monstrous rates, it would go all the way up to the head of the organization, the head of like people looking after charities to make sure they're not scams, etc. Going, what is this 20% death rate doing here? This right. is crazy. Do you think Renee is a murderer? I would not, oh God, that's a good question. Oh my God. So after all of this, where is she now? What do you think about HBO's documentary? Any comments, Renee? Okay guys, what did you think? What is happening in Uganda? or what was happening in Uganda. And better yet, how many other clinics do we have there that was not cleared? You know what I mean? Like what happened to the credentials? Are you telling me that Ugandans are suffering from white superior complex or white savior complex syndrome? Like seriously. Anyways, y'all, people can only do to you what they are allowed to. Now, originally, I'm not defending her now, not defending her not one bit of what she did medically. Now, if she went to Uganda and she saw the need for something and she saw that she can help and she's trying her very best to help as much as she know how to, why couldn't she just collect the funds and allow them to open a medical clinic so she can pay the doctors? or the nurses. Instead, you have two nurses 
that were somewhat part-time because sometimes they were there, sometimes they were not. And then you were performing the medical things yourself. She's inserting IV in babies, in critical patients. Guys, let me tell you something. I don't know how she was able to do this for this long, but the death rate in that area you have to look at okay what was it before what would it what would it would have been if she wasn't there but the fact that it was 20% more than when she finally got a medical doctor on board when the medical doctor came on board the death rate dropped to 10% my thing is why why is this allowed to happen that 119 innocent lives we're taking because of what neglect because of greed like seriously so you're telling me that they're that desperate that they will accept just about anyone to do anything so she could have came there and performed surgery is what you're telling me anybody could have came there and performed surgery as long as they have the funds anyways y'all I don't know what's happening or I don't know, <laughs> but listen, leave your comments below because while they're suffering and losing their children over there, this chick is walking around here in the United States, just hell of a happy, but oh no, she ain't because those reporters don't play with them now. They follow her wherever she go. So now she has two daughters and she's living it up. And I think she adopted two kids too. But it's like, who would allow children to be around her? Anyways, y'all, go ahead and leave your comment below. And know that Tony loves and appreciates you guys. Have an awesome, wonderful, magnificent day.